Hi, it's Tim. Welcome to the corner. Today we have got a Commodore 16. We're not going to take it apart and see if it works because I've already looked at it and I know it works fine and that's not particularly interesting. What we are going to look at is what is in this box. So let's take a look. Now this has been sent to me by Tynemouth Software. They've sent it to me free of charge, I haven't paid for it. But beyond that, there's no obligation. They haven't told me what to say or anything of that nature. Now this is a beta unit. So I think it's whee, subject to change and subject to bits flying about. Let's just open the anti-static bag. It is a 64K RAM upgrade for a C16. Now, I think because this is a beta device, it has not come with any instructions. So, we're kind of winging it, but how difficult can it be? Well, we shall see. So we've got the board itself, that is presumably the RAM. We've got some dip switches and clear instructions here. That way 64K, that way 16K. And some chip sockets which we are going to be replacing presumably what is currently on the motherboard. Let's open up the C16 and see what we've got. Actually, before I do that, it occurs to me you might want to see that this actually does work. So, we'll just plug it in. Right. Power on at the plug. There we go. Basic version 3.512277 bytes free. So that is a C16 16K. Down there. So let's open it up. For a 30 something quid computer, it's actually not bad. Case is very dirty and it's got some cable rash. But, see, there it is, that's the LED. All that's happened is that the connecting ring has basically come off. So, board is a bit dusty but looks to be in good condition. So these are the two RAM chips. Just looking at this, it's quite clear that what it does is it goes here. So we need to unsocket, or unsolder rather, these four RAM chips. So let's get to it. I'm just going to mark these chips on the underside so that we know which ones we are unsoldering and we don't get the wrong ones. So it's this one, this one, this one, this one. Let's double check that. That one, that one. I got that wrong, it's actually there. So let's just remove that mark. Uh, 
There we go. I'm going to put some flux on here and cue the soldering montage or the desoldering montage. Add some fresh solder first. Okay, I'm probably going to need some hot air just to get those out cleanly. So I will be back in a moment. The chips are out and I've cleaned the board off. So we don't want to get rid of these chips because they will be useful. The RAM chips themselves, these are 81416s. 16k by 4. They're going on eBay for 10 quid a chip, so it's worth keeping those. In any case, this mod is non-destructive and we can just put it all back. So the next thing to do is going to be to put sockets in here. We also need to put these two pin headers in because we have to connect this wire, or these three wires rather, And this will be detailed in the manual, but the manual is not yet available. However, two of these wires go to A14 and A15. And these are typically on these two pins here, or these two solder pads here. The other wire is Phi Zero, which is one of the clock lines. And that goes to pin 8 on the PLA, this is the PLA, and pin 8 is on this side, but that via there goes to pin 8, and that is the Phi Zero line. So, I've cleaned these up, just these little areas, and to quote Ripley in Aliens, oh dear, there's a clean patch. So I'm going to have to go and clean the entire board, but you don't need to see that now. So I just need to unsolder these pins and then we can put the sockets in and these. So we have two to go in there. So that's those in. Ah, fell out. Ah, no, 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 no. I should have taped it. That was me being cocky. Okay, that is in. So now we just put in the sockets. Don't forget to check that they are oriented the correct way. IPA just to clean it up. There we go. Now to fit it. It simply goes
hopefully. Okay, here's a tip. Instead of doing what I did, it might be a good idea to put the sockets on the chips and then solder that in all at once. Don't spear yourself with those pins. There we go, that's in. And then this now, it can only go one way because it is keyed. So that goes onto there. This one. Goes onto there. And these two get onto there, like that. And that should be it. Let's put it back together and try it and see what we get. It's plugged back in. Okay, it's plugged back in. I haven't screwed it down because I want to clean this inside of the case out because it is filthy. Right, let's switch it on. Our LED works. 60671 bytes free. Woohoo. Now this is also jittering. That's interesting. I can't type with this funny angle. There we go. Now obviously we can do more extensive memory tests but at a simple level it's saying that we have 64k. So you're pretty much not going to get a game out of me because if you remember the last time on the plus four I tried to play I don't know, what was it? Golf or something? It just got stuck in a corner of the screen and no matter what I did, it just bounced backwards and forwards and that was it. Me and games don't get on. So, script plus. This is going to be exciting. We are going to start the great English novel. 60671 script plus on F2. Copyright 1983 Precision Software. The reason we are using Script Plus is because I used to work for Precision Software. And, you know, loyalty, etc. Right. 40 columns. Disc. Printer type is going to be an Epson because that's what we've got, although it's not attached. And there's no storage attached, so... Uh, ASCII. Oops. So, the Great English Novel, Chapter One.
bitch. That'll do. Chapter 1. My first encounter with Alfie was on a dark September night. He was running towards me, yelling something. I couldn't make out his words, but he had that bloodlust in his eyes that people sometimes get in the heat of battle. Get down! Oh, crap. Probably not the great English novel, but there you go. So, 64K in a Commodore 16. So here it is all back together. I've cleaned up the inside of the case. I've had to hot glue the LED in because the little clip just broke. But that's fine. And the big job here, of course, was cleaning the keyboard. I'll show you a before picture once I took the keys off. This was absolutely horrid. But now, and they're not retrobrighted, with the keys off in a strong light, you can see there is a very, very slight hint of yellow, but it's not enough to worry about, to be really honest. So, power it up, the LED comes on. And there we are, 60671 bytes free. Now there is just one thing that we have not tried, and that is in here, there is a set of jumpers that goes between 16K and 64K. So in the event that we find some software that actually isn't compatible with having 64K, and I really don't know that we would find such, but you never know, you can just Flip the jumpers from that position to that position. And lo and behold, we are back to 12277 bytes free. So that is our 16K or 64K. Let's just put it back. Because why would we put this in and run it at 16K? Now I've seen some boards that actually have a switch for changing the um, memory amount. But I don't honestly see why you would need that. And they are pin headers, so if you really, really do want to put a switch in there you can. If you've made it this far thank you for watching please check out my Patreon the link is in the description. My current patrons are scrolling up through the screen and I will see you next time. See ya! Bye!